I think that's one of the things I should clarify. We have yeah. four studies underway in the U.S. right now in, in the Midwest, Ohio, uh, in Texas, Colorado, um, and in Missouri, where we actually completed the first study from about a project from St. Louis to Kansas City. Uh, tremendously exciting, and if you take that, that St. Louis project, for example, that's a trip that takes about three and a half hours right now, and it would be done in under 30 minutes. Which sounds really great. How much is it going to cost? When are we going to actually start to see these in place? Well, there's a number of steps. Look, this is a stepwise approach, and this is not just putting on a new, a new bus line or doing something of like course. that. Uh, first off, let me say that there's been a tremendous amount of technology development that's been done. Uh, when I started to look at this, that just blew me away, right? I mean, they took me out to, to Las Vegas where the, a test track has actually been built and you see this actually operating and, and, and doing it. Um, and you begin to get the sense that this is real and it can happen and, and, and it's doing it. Uh, what really needs to happen right now is to really move from the first stage of testing to really the development of real projects. The four projects I mentioned in, in the U.S., a project that we're working on in Spain, and then in, in India, where I think is a very, very exciting project from, from Mumbai uh, to Panay. Uh, a trip today that, that's about four hours apart, and we have been designated as the original project proponent for this right now, which means that, that we are starting the work on this project with the government cooperatively. We still have some more work to do in the procurement process, but I believe that we could be in construction on the, on the first loop, the first 11 kilometer test loop uh, in 2019. Jay, the controversy around this company is immense. From Chervin Pishavar, the co-founder, no longer involved with the company, Rob Lloyd, recently the CEO, now not there anymore. Richard Branson is stepping, stepping back as chairman. There was an early deal with Russia that now looks a bit more controversial than it did at the time two and a half years ago. Saudi Arabia looks like it's stepping back from its investment. Maybe you can clarify that. And then there are reports of massive layoffs as well and questions about your cash position. So Saudi first and then cash. So look, I, I think Saudi, we're, we're like any other company, we're looking at the situation in Saudi. What I'd say more generally is that I think the Middle East is a region that's very, very important for Hyperloop. Are they in or out? Can you say? Do you know? Not sure. Um, but, but the Middle East in general is a, is, a, is a great area and has had a lot of support in terms of doing it. And the idea that Hyperloop could be knitting together the GCC is, is actually real in terms of being able to do it. We're thrilled that DP World is one of our main investors. And to go to your point about funding, um, our current investors are leading this round of funding. <clears throat> DP World is, is leading that round, all of our current investors. Uh, and I'm really excited about that in terms of being able to do it. Look, there's history, no question about that. Uh, no one can, can but, but it is history. I think what you're really seeing today is the evolution of the company, the maturity of the company, the, the real pivot and development from something that says, hey, we've done fantastic tech. We'll continue to do fantastic tech. We're an incredible tech company. The, the people here blow me away. But we also have to pivot now toward, toward really being commercial, to really setting these up as real projects. And we're starting to tick off the things that say, what makes this happen?